So next week we will resume our children's sermon. I got to put on my appropriate guard. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to keep it on for the whole sermon. <laughs> well, today is the perfect set of lessons for you, old Germans. Old Germans, don't you love these lessons today? Okay, the hat's coming. Look at these wonderful lessons before us. Goodness gracious, finally our German and Scandinavian heritage have been justified in the Word of God. What is it we are called to do? Why, we are called to be Germans, aren't we? We're called to point out other people's faults. Oh, yes. Yes, we can point out other people's faults today. And not only that, we have permission to be critical. Oh, yes. Not only can we point out their faults, but we can, we can call them before committees and churches and things like that. We can give people a piece of our mind, can't we? An old German. Yeah. Now you know you want all these things out in the open, right? You want everyone to know where you stand, and you want them to know that you know where they stand. No sugar coating here. So let's go to that old Ezekiel 33. See you, O German. Oh no, it says mortal. So you, German, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Why do I have a feeling we could take the word human and put the word human in there? Oh, well, guess what? That's what mortal means, doesn't it? I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you will surely perish. And you do not speak to warn the wicked and, turn, and to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die. But their blood I will require of your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. There it is. We got to call people on the carpet. Because if we don't call people on the carpet, we ourselves are going to be called ourselves and our blood will be required of us. Wonderful. Wonderful justification in Scripture for pointing out the faults of everyone else. Mm -hmm. I like it. Let's go to our gospel lesson for today. It even gets better. Oh, Germans, you are going to love this in our gospel lesson in Scandinavians. You are going to love this. Jesus said to the disciples, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault. Goodness gracious, we can leave here today. That's all we need to hear. You can point out the fault when the two of you are alone. Okay, all right, I guess. At least that's how it's going to start. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. Well, yeah, of course, because they did what you said, right? That sounds pretty good. We can get along real well with people as long as they do what we say, because we are right. Yes, oh, Germans and Scandinavians. <laughs> you better throw that in there. <laughs> but if you're not listened to, oh, it gets juicier. Oh, you almost don't want them to listen to you, right? You can get these people in so much trouble. If you're not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. Yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. But here comes the good part. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. Oh, my goodness. This is pure gold. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, well, there you go. Let such one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. There is, oh, my friend, Germans. You've been justified all along. Scripture has just... Oh, oh, wait, hold on. Oh, wait a minute, hold on here. What was that in verse 17 of the Gospel? What do we got at the... If the, if the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. 
And if the offender refuses even to listen to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Does somebody have some white out? I don't like that. Let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Who are the Gentiles? Oh, wait a minute. The Gentiles are the ones that is everybody else in the world except the Jews. Oh, German, I hate to tell you this, but you're a Gentile. How are we going to work this thing? That such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. A tax collector. This was written by Mark, right? No, this was written by Luke, right? No, this was written by John, right? Oh, no, wait a minute. This was written by Matthew. What, what, what did Matthew do for a living? Oh, yeah, Matthew was a, was a tax collector. What the heck are they saying here? What do they want from me? What's going on here? What's really at the bottom of all this, O oh, German, O oh, Scandinavian? What's really going on here? Hmm, maybe I'm reading this wrong. Maybe it's not really about vengeance. Maybe it's not really about being right all the time. Maybe it's not really about dragging people around and getting them into trouble, as fun as that is. Maybe it's about something else. Hmm, let's see. Who's uh, Ezekiel talking to? Oh yeah, Ezekiel's talking to people that have turned away from God and they have lost their ability to care for one another and they've turned away from God. Hmm, let's see. Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back. Turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? What? I, I, okay, so wait a minute. So the ones that are being... Oh, it turns out that the house of Israel in Ezekiel 33 are just as much at fault as everybody else is. Oh. And the gospel. Hmm. This Gentile and tax collector stuff. Who is it that Jesus died for? Everybody. Who is it that Paul goes out and, well, has a special ministry for? The Gentiles. And don't let it be lost on you, O German, O Scandinavian, the irony in the gospel for today. That Matthew, the tax collector, is saying that, yes, the tax collector is the one that is condemned. Now, we can make a mistake. We can say, okay, well, what this is all about is it's just about whitewashing sin. So what? So we're just not supposed to do any of this stuff? We're just supposed to whitewash sin and let it just wash under the bridge. No, no, no. What is this more about? This is more about the hubris in our hearts. The pride in our hearts. Why do we go to the one who has sinned against us? Is it so they truly feel the love of Jesus Christ through redemption, through salvation, through the word? Or do we go to them just to rub it in just a little bit? Just a little bit. And therein lies, I think, the crux of the piece of the puzzle today. The linchpin, so to speak. Let's go to our second reading for today. Romans chapter 13. Who is Paul talking to? Romans who were what? Pagans. They didn't live by the word of God. Definitely not by the word of Jesus Christ. But yet, what word is Paul sharing with the Romans today? Oh no, one ever, no, oh, no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is. It's now the time, time for you to wake up from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. Let us set aside and lay aside the works of darkness and put on the honor of light. Let us live honorably. Hmm. So this whole thing in the gospel isn't about not doing it. It's about doing it with the right heart, the right mind, the, most, the right thinking. Why do you think it begins? Why do you think Jesus begins this process, which is a very serious process, in privacy? The two of you are alone. Because it's really about winning the sinner back to the way of Christ, isn't it? It's really about maybe pointing something out to someone that they, they're not aware of. Or maybe they're aware of it only too much. But to make a public thing out of it would be embarrassing. How do we handle that? How do we handle that? Not as Germans, not as Scandinavians, but as Christians. Hopefully we follow the words of Jesus Christ and we listen to Paul in our second reading for today. Well, I'm sorry, O German and O Scandinavian. I thought I could get us off the hook today. I thought I could make it easier. Boy, I thought we could take that perfectionism and that work ethic and that need to be right all the time. And I thought maybe we had biblical justification to just lord it over those folks. But once again, it seems that Jesus is pulling me in a different direction. And why? Because I myself am a sinner. Because I myself am broken. Because I myself am the Gentile. The one who needs the salvation. So let's not get soft on sin. But let's decide how we talk to one another, reason with one another, and include God in the process. It's crucial. And that's what determines the family of God. Amen.